Hello everyone out there in Google Plus land and YouTube and online land. This is Ronnie Bincer, the Hangout Helper with a phenomenal special guest, Sandra D. Robinson. She's going to help us understand how do we get comfortable in front of a camera because these Hangout things are so cool and many of you out there are wanting to use them or embracing them more and more. She's had a great career and still has a career. Sorry, I don't mean to say it over. <laughs> Um, doing TV work and helping with her clients understand how to become more comfortable, more confident inside of a camera environment, like in this case, inside of a Hangout. So we're going to talk a, a fair amount about how do we feel comfortable inside of a Hangout or a Hangout on Air. And for those of you that are out there watching live, just so you know, if you're on the event inside Google+, Plus you might need to refresh the page or tell people to refresh it in case you were there early and you couldn't hit the play button. But you should be able to hit the play button now and we are just starting out. So Sandra D, welcome. Hey, and, thanks. Um, thanks for joining us and helping spread your expertise about how to be phenomenal in front of a camera. Well, I love the fact that you that you correlate what I do with like Google Hangouts because I try to explain to people even in corporations and things that so many meetings are now webinars and they're they're done through a webcam and you know I want to point out right away Ronnie the first time that we ch chatted I was like you look great because you've got the little backlight going behind you and you've got your faces all lit up and you know I said let's use this as an example for how to look you're doing the right thing, and I'm challenged right now because I'm at a location. I'm, I'm actually at a hotel, and I ran into one of their boardrooms, so I have the lovely overhead lighting, so you can't really see my eyes very well, and the right. background's not very exciting. I have a little glare behind me, so when, between the two of us, Ronnie, you're winning so far. We've got Ronnie. what to do and what maybe not to do, <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's cool, and that's technical. I do that all the time, but let's talk about the the impact psychologically or emotionally on someone. Now you are like the phenomenal beauty star. So that's what you look like to me. How could you potentially be shy of a camera? That's sort of one of the questions that I think people have for you. I'm, I'm really glad that you asked that because I like to let people know right off the top where I'm coming from um, because it, the, the package does not always display what's going on underneath for anybody. Um, I actually had, I was extremely shy. I had very low self-confidence, had no idea who I was. And I think that's one of the reasons that when I was very young, I, I got really absorbed with performing and taking on a character because that was where I could find that I could look people in the eye, that I could, you know, walk into a room and, and appear to be confident because I was playing some role. And as long as somebody told me who I was, I was fine. So that's a pretty tough place to come from when you don't know who you are, um, to be able to do what I, I teach my experts and my, my politicians and my authors to do now, which is, you know, live in that best space of your energy and where you are and your passion and move forward. I didn't even know who that was. So for me, my trek was getting comfortable on camera so that um, I could represent charities and things because being a soap star, I had a great following. You know, soaps are so popular, their fans are so loyal that people would bring me in and say, can you do a public service announcement for my charity? Can you, can you uh, help me sell the skincare product? Can you get on camera and just be yourself? And I would literally black out in my mind from fear. I, I wouldn't actually pass out, but I felt like I did because I couldn't remember anything. And it, was, it was easier for you, in a sense, to read a script than to just uh, be yourself. A thousand times. A thousand times. For me to look into a camera, see that red light go on, I lost all sense of self, no energy. I, did, I couldn't remember anything I was going to say. And I actually work now with, with speakers that can speak to thousands of people live. And they know that one girl said, if I just know that someone's videotaping me at a live event, it throws off her game. Wow. So I know that there are people come from all different areas. For me, I had to actually do some work on myself uh, and, and then learn, number one, to have fun. I was doing all these trainings with coaches that taught me, like you said, the technical part is what I said, oh, you got the light on. They were showing me, in some ways, the technical part of representing yourself on, on camera. So I was taught 
how to get rid of my accent, how to stand, how to do my hair, you know, all of that stuff, how to read with just the right influence on certain words, you know, <laughs> which we, we don't even do that so much anymore. But I was taught all of that. I, my lesson came when I was too exhausted one day on set to hold that up, and I just started giggling. <laughs> and I, and I, I, you know, I figured they would yell cut, and they didn't. So I dutifully kept going through the little teleprompter script that they had set up for me at that point. And the director came out and said that was fantastic. And I thought, were, oh my gosh, real, right? I've I mean, done everything was... backwards. Yeah. yeah. the The goal is to actually have fun, get comfortable, forget about what other people, you know, what you think other people want you to be. And this goes true whether you're doing television, webinars, Google Plus, or you know, the Hangouts, or or anything. It's really just I help people find that best, you know, display of who they are, live in that space, and then we work on some of the performance stuff. You know, as far as like keep your chin down so that your eyes show to the camera, you know, when you don't have an overhead light. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I mean, with this new stuff, like with Google Plus Hangouts and Hangouts on Air, as well as Skype and all the other various ways to video conference nowadays, yeah. it's becoming more and more prevalent, or at least for me, because I focus so much on this space, it's yeah. becoming more and more important that people get comfortable in front of a camera, and that's partly why we're doing this session. But yep. do you have any suggestions or experiences of common mistakes that people do when they're on camera? Uh, yeah, a lot of them. Um, we touched on one just briefly when I was explaining where I came from. You have people that think they have to be a certain way. Um, you know, that they, they, in order to lead people, uh, especially women, this is interesting, I talk to a lot of women about this, because uh, they tend to take on very masculine qualities. And they put on, you know, a lot of people will put on this sort of facade of, I am going to present now. And, you know, and their energy truly changes. And they do things like this with their hands. Like, what is that? You know, but really, I want to shoot the person that taught people to do this with their hands. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, tell me. Yeah. So let's see. Yeah. We have a politician that's running for mayor of Los Angeles and, and his whole ad like the whole commercial, he's just doing this to every every group, and I'm like, oh, it's a pet peeve of mine. So you know, be natural. Find that you need to find that space and just sort of live in it. If you're funny, be funny. People think that because, like, for instance, uh, I had a gentleman this weekend talks about financial, uh, you know, uh, financial investments, things like that. Kind of a dry topic, right? But he's kind of a quirky, funny guy. Mm -hmm. And he's really putting, he's starting to do these videos, he's getting really into it, he's editing them himself and, and all this stuff, and they look fantastic, but the energy that he uses on his videos is half of what he has in person, and you really have to switch that. So wherever your energy level is live, you want it to be like actually higher, a lot higher when you get in, in front of a camera, because that's going to be more engaging. You have to be engaging, you have to be fascinated with what you're talking about, because when you're fascinated, we are fascinated by you. So in so, essence, you have to be passionate about what you're, what you're doing. You have to. You have to come from a place of, of being real and being really excited and sharing that. And if that means that when you're practicing, because I think everybody should practice to get an idea of what they look like, because we don't really know. Um, I think when you're practicing, take that energy level way up to the sky. Like I jokingly say, read your stuff and talk about your stuff as if you're Jim Carrey in the craziest role that he's ever played. Because, you know, I couldn't think of anybody more rubberized and crazy than Jim Carrey. So, but I, I, I said, do that and take your energy like crazy through the roof, higher than you ever think you would ever want to be seen, and then play it back. And you'll be surprised that your energy doesn't look as crazy as you think it is because we're so programmed to watching people, even the people that read our news, use an incredible amount of energy when they're sitting there communicating with us. So that's what you need to do in order to come across as a leader. And so if you're, if you're leading your team in a virtual boardroom or you're trying to lead folks you know, in a demonstration online of something that you do or you're trying to coach people into your, you know, and to entice them into getting into your coaching program if you're a life coach or a business coach, whatever it is, you are, you want to come across as a leader, as an authority, as somebody that, you know, that we want to follow. And if you cut your energy level down in half, obviously that's not going to, that's not going to do it. 
Yeah. So, let me let me bring in if, let me bring in a couple comments in. This this is one of the beauties of the Hangout on Air thing is I can watch yeah. comments and bring them in. Love Chris it. Pilgrim just mentioned that being passionate is something that he was told 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 is what helps him sell his ideas. Um, yeah. So being passionate about that, and then Eduardo from Spain is saying that's where you're from, right? De veras, yo creo que sí. In many sales courses, they teach you to put your hands like that in order yes. to control them, especially for hot-blooded people. We tend to move them a lot, so it's a way to control your hands, I guess. Yeah, it is. Oh, I know. Um, I know that people are taught that. But you can control your hands below the camera, right? I mean. Well, yeah, absolutely. But one. let's just let's just say that you're you're on camera and your whole body is showing and, and all of that. It, it's funny. I I don't like this because this is something that's unnatural. What you're what happens when you think about you know if you gesture with your hands hot blooded what did he say hot blooded yeah hot blooded okay. um, if you're hot blooded and you know and you gesture and it's part of who you are we want to see that i want to see that yes i want to see that excitement i want to okay. see i want to see you moving i want to see your shoulders moving i i'm i move around a lot and if i didn't if i tried to stand still or i tried to do something with my hands to control that energy what happens in your body is the energy gets trapped and then it'll start to like short circuit things that's when people still I don't know why I can't remember my bullet points I can't remember what I'm going to say I got off topic I didn't say what I was supposed to say I and it's because they're thinking about what to do with their hands okay or whatnot. Let, me, let me bring something up here just from the technical and you tell see so you, you can play off it with the uh, physiological or the emotional or whatever yeah. however you want to call it and when you're in a hangout or a hangout on air, you have the ability to control the big window that you yes. see. And so if you click on the little film strip that's of you, you mm -hmm. are putting on, you're pinning yourself, or technically that's what they call it, pinning, or the old name was blue boxing, and then you are visible right then and there. So this is a phenomenal way for you to be able to see what you look like yeah. when you're inside of a hangout. And you can say, yo, my hair... What hair? <laughs> My hair is off, or something like that. And so, yeah, look at that! Wow, mm. <laughs> that gives you a little wind blown. That gives you the vision of what other people are seeing, and so because yes. of that, I think that tool. If you're doing a hangout all by yourself, you can see what you really look like, mm -hmm. and even when you're part of a show, to verify that you are looking the way you want while you're doing your presentation, go ahead and pin yourself or blue box yourself, and that's what you will see. So, any thoughts about? You know, some people say practicing in front of a, a mirror is a good idea. Do you have any suggestions about what do people look like when they're ready to go? Are you still there? Okay. I think she may have froze on froze us. Up. Oh, no, you're back. Okay. You're back. There you are. Am I back? Yes. Okay, so, oh, no, it might be my connection here in this lovely hotel. Um, okay. I, think, I think I heard you say, some people say practice being in front of a mirror, right? Right. And okay. I was suggesting with this tool, we can actually be inside of the Hangout itself. You don't even need to be broadcasting. You can just sort of blue box yourself, pin yourself, this, and see what you look like. I think this is better because uh, we get very used to looking in the mirror. And I, and I, I tease people about this. I, I have a phrase. I had to come up with a name for a reaction that people have when they first see themselves in walking, talking form on camera. And so I, I, I noticed that people would have a difficult time watching themselves and it would sometimes take a short time, sometimes a longer time to get over it. So I called it the, sun, the tunnel of self-deprecation because people tend to like hate the way they look. And then as I work with them, they gradually come through it and then they start to actually enjoy it. And um, But everybody at first has that shock of, I don't really look like that. I don't move my mouth like that. My hair doesn't look like that. My, my you know, whatever it is. And I did my share of that too. And the reason is when we're in front of our mirror at home, we usually, especially women, we, we light and we look into the mirror in a way that makes us feel confident, right? So I had one girlfriend that never made this face except when she was getting ready. She was very gregarious, and when she was getting ready, she would get ready into the mirror, and I'm going to mimic her. She would get ready in the mirror like this. Right? And then she'd walk out. And I'm like, what, do you think you actually look like that? Because you never make that face. 
But in her mind, you know, she was this sexy vixen that walked yeah. around. And, and I'm sure that if we all do a little version of that, okay, this is how I look, and then we actually see ourselves in moving, walking, talking form. And I was much more goofy when I saw myself than I ever thought I was. I thought I was nice and slick, and I was a soap opera girl that was totally smooth and, and awesome. And I looked at myself and I was like, I'm kind of a goofball. So <laughs> I, I just, I have to make love, you know, make, make like with that. And and just deal with it. And that's when it, it helps to work with a coach. It really does work with somebody that can support you and just go, no, 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 you're doing great. And point out the things that are really powerful that you're doing and allow you to let go of the stuff that could be blocking, you know, your right. thoughts. I call it self-defeating, you know, uh, thought patterns. Yeah. So, no, so let me throw in a self-defeating thought pattern that, or at least I see it as that some people are saying that the extra 10 pounds, you look, you look heavier when you're on camera. What do you what do you think about that? I don't. You know, it's funny. I don't think that that's so much um, true anymore. Uh, I think it was true when we did video. We actually used video because it did just the format itself made us look heavier. I don't think we look heavier. The reality is now it makes us look exactly how we look. HD wrinkles and all. You know everything like we are that's what we look like so the brutal reality is if you look 10 pounds heavier you might want to lose 10 pounds <laughs> okay um, there was a question out there will this be recorded for later yes we're recording we're doing a hangout on air which is like a live broadcast right now and it's automatically making the recording which I will leave inside this event so you can watch it again later when and cool. if you need to um, in some of your materials Sandra D you talk about owning your space. Can you yeah. help us understand what that means? In essence, it's what I said about coming across as an authority. Um, remember I, when I first started, I said that I didn't know who I was and um, I would look for a character to take on. You know, as a young girl, I was kind of taught that my self-worth was zero and that I really shouldn't have been born was the message that I was given. And so that's a tough place to come from when you're trying to stand there as an authority. So before I found that, I was still, people were pulling me in and asking me to, like I said, do charity events, sell things on infomercials, and, and guess what? That requires a call to action for each one of those things. Just like, you know, when you're doing something for business, you have to have a call to action. You have to have a, okay, press the button, click here, donate here, join me next week, come to my luncheon, come, whatever it is. You have to get people to move, and I couldn't get asked back to host any infomercials because I couldn't sell anything. And the reason was I would say all the right things. I would do all the right things. I had the right hair. I did the right makeup. They didn't, there was a disingenuous thing, not intentional, but I just wasn't owning who I was or why I was there. And that's what I mean by owning your space. It's a difference of having, you know, people walk into a room at a party and then all of a sudden that one person walks into the room and you have that feeling like, I've got to find out who that is. That's somebody that owns who they are and everything about them is in alignment. You know, everything that they're putting out there, their personal brand is in alignment with their message. So whether you are representing a product that belongs to a company or you have your own company or you have your own thing going, you, you want to, even, you know, as an artist, as an actor, people think that, you know, I talk to actors and they think, well, I, I one gorgeous girl with a very voluptuous and crazy personality, you know, she would go to auditions and, and be told that the audition was awful. Her feedback was terrible. Yet she's fantastic on camera. Marlon Brando was the same way. He couldn't audition. Hmm. And it was because when they walked in the room, they would think that they think they need to be somebody else. And it comes right back down to no. I told this girl, walk in the room, start the conversation as you were walking into a party or to meet your best friend's friend or, you know, be own that space the second the door owns up. Own that space the second the camera pops on because, and that's, it takes a little bit of work sometimes because like you said, it's a new it's a new arena for a lot of people. Um, so it just takes a little bit of mindset to know that when you're looking at the camera, you actually want to be looking through the camera and having the conversation with the people you most need to reach. And yeah. that's the tough thing is people say, well, it's, I, can't, I can't talk at it like it's my best friend. That was the advice a lot of people get. That's what I used to get, and it would only make me panic. Because I didn't know what that meant. My best friend laughs at my jokes like you just did, even if they're not funny. And the, You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. And the, but the camera doesn't do anything. And so it leaves people kind of with their own energy bouncing back at them. And 
you know, uh, it's a very disruptive, kind of uncomfortable place to be until you realize that your energy and your your reach is actually through that little wonderful piece of technology. It has no power of its own, none. So you actually, have power. this stuff, this hangout stuff, could improve everybody's ability to be on camera because, in essence, I can have a conversation with you. I can look at you when yeah. I'm talking to you, and it just happens to be recorded at the same time. Yeah, isn't that cool? It's a nice, yeah. easy way to get used to seeing yourself on camera because you actually have someone you're talking to. This is the best way to do it, actually. All yeah. right, cool. Well, we've got someone sitting in in the uh, on the side. I'm going to turn on his video right now. His name is Gareth Mark. And Gareth, don't forget, you're going to need to unmute yourself. Um, Gareth is involved with food bloggers and the food blogging community here on Google+. And I think he's got some questions he'd like to pose from that perspective. Tell us what you want. I sure do, although first I've got a more general question. You mentioned makeup already, and you know, generally speaking, ladies are a lot more familiar with makeup than guys are. Uh, some of us have more or less brightness on the top. Have you got any tips for us uh, about makeup, you know, even a suggestion what to get? Ron, Ronnie's touching his head. I love that. A um, little, little shine going on there. <laughs> you know, I, I know that guys a lot of times are uncomfortable with this whole topic, but the reality is sometimes, ultimately, like even when it comes to gestures, shine on your head, shine, you know, on the picture behind you like I have, anything that distracts from your message, like the hair in my mouth right now, Gotta love what, life. What Gotta love it. it. But anything that, that distracts from your message is something that you want to get rid of. So if it's a matter of borrowing, you know, a compact that happened, hopefully it's your color, from your wife or your girlfriend, then do that. Um, what you really, all you really need to stop that shine is translucent powder and a little, a little uh, pad that you just dab on. That's it. That's really all you need. And if you can come, you know, to, to even when I work with my folks that go to, you know, get on, get on air and do media, the guys will carry that with them because I don't know about you, but there might've been times when you're watching television, you're like, wow, I just keep staring at the shiny spot on his forehead where the lights are bouncing off of it. Anything that takes away from your message and what you're saying, you want to get rid of. And if it's a matter of going out to the Maybelline counter and telling the girl you want translucent powder for your forehead, you know, and spending a couple bucks, that's pretty darn easy. So um, I, I think that's really all you need. Now, if you have a different brand, say, you know, um, you're a guy that actually is seen wearing makeup, then you can go a little further. <laughs> but most guys, all you need is translucent powder on your forehead, and that's it. Oh, and, and Gareth, let me just play off of that because Chris Pilgrim had a similar question. What do we do with glasses? I wear glasses, and the light reflects off the glasses. Yeah. and Sometimes that's really hard, especially when it's dark and the light from the computer screen is mainly the light that you see. You get this yeah. really bright glare. Any ideas? You know, there's a difference looking at the two of you. And Ronnie, do you have any kind of special glass that's like glare-free, supposedly, or anything no, like that? No, but what, I'm, what I've done is I've learned to stick my head up further. If I put my head down, there you go. You get the yeah. glare. So I've come to the point where I my neck just hurts after a while, but I get my head <laughs> up most of the time. Well, that's interesting because normally I do tell people to keep their chin down so that their eyes open up and we have an easier connection. But you're not holding your chin particularly up. You're just holding it up enough that your glasses don't, don't glare. Um, and sometimes, you know, you can get the glare-free glasses, but they don't always work. And so it's kind of hit or miss. You know, you, I think the glare-free is glare meaning me, I don't see the glare, but it's not from reflective. The other side. side. Right. Yeah, I, I think I think a lot of times that's what they mean by it. Yeah, because I've got folks that go into the media all the time and they say, I bought, I paid extra, and it, it's a lot more to get the glare-free glasses, but they don't always work. So um, I, I don't really have any advice other than to do kind of what you did. Find, you know, if there's a way that you can see yourself and, and move away from it. But they are going to reflect the lights. And, well, that, and that, that, again, again, is the beauty of these hangouts. If you can look at what you look like, you can adjust your position yeah. of your neck and things like that. Anyway, Sarah, so you, you had some other questions you wanted to bring on, and then I've got some more from the comments, so go for it. Sure. Um, <clears throat> now, as Ronnie mentioned, uh, I'm part of the food bloggers community here, and we've been doing a lot of hangouts 
uh, Hangouts on Air that are food demos. Uh, that means that our hands are on camera a lot. Have you got any tips to that we should things we should be looking for in regards to our hands uh, that we can do to make our hands look better? Oh, interesting. Um, keep them clean. <laughs> Please, <laughs> um, no. But if you're if you're showing stuff on camera with your hands, um, you want to make sure that you are cheating everything to the camera. So I noticed that people that aren't haven't been taught this will naturally go about their gestures. Say they're you're you know uh, you have a bowl. I'm watching myself as I do this so you guys can see it. So you've got a bowl. And um, and you're you're stirring something. Most people will just naturally do what they're going to do, and I'm blocking the view. So you actually have to kind of cheat by holding whatever it is that you're holding, so the camera can see it. And um, you have it's unnatural, so you have to get used to that. You have to act as if there's going to be something that zaps your hand or anything that gets in the way of what they need to see in the camera. So um, that's that's the toughest thing, and it's just a short learning curve. But um, I, you know, I started, as you know, doing uh, soap operas. Did a ton of soap operas, which were shot very, very quickly, and there were multiple cameras. And so I learned really fast because I worked with the divas of the show that did not want to be blocked in camera. So I learned right away where I had to stand in order to not get in the way of the camera. I developed a real sense of okay, the camera needs to see past me, needs to see that. And when you're demonstrating something, you have to be extremely aware of what the camera needs to see and that you're not in the way of it. Okay. Good okay. answer. Um, Gareth, you probably have another, but let me bring in another question here in between. Um, Tessa Krantz is pointing out that many times she's the person behind the camera encouraging others to speak on camera. Yeah. And the question is, what advice do you have to encourage the person on camera to relax as uh -huh. they a lot of times are kind of outside their comfort zone? Absolutely. Um, there's so much. And of course, it doesn't help when I say that everybody has their own individual thing that's going to help them relax. But part of it, it, particularly if you're kind of interviewing somebody and getting them to, to share who they are or talk about their business or their product or their service or something like that, um, some advice is if you're behind the camera or like Ronnie, if you're getting ready to do some kind of an interview like this and the person seems nervous, take them outside of what you're going to be talking about and find something that they are passionate about, whether it's their kids, their dog, their, their travel, um, what do they do for fun, get to know them. This is a quick, really quick way to build rapport. So it's kind of like the idea behind when you go into a networking event, you don't ask, hey, what do you do? it puts it on a superficial level that conversation if you immediately go into hey if you could go anywhere tomorrow on vacation who where'd you go and who would you go with mm -hmm. you know get them talking about themselves people love to talk about themselves number one that relaxes them it also will get them out of the immediate you know tenseness of like oh my gosh I have to remember my bullet points and it'll actually change the way their face looks when people talk about something they're passionate about it's such a subliminal thing for us. We don't even realize it. Our cheeks will flush a little bit. Our pupils dilate a little bit. We actually look better. And so particularly in Hangout, when they can see how they look when they're talking about something like that, they might actually make the adjustment and relax themselves a little bit. Right. But I would just get them, you know, in a better mental state talking about like, you know, oh, you have kids, you know, what's the craziest thing your kid did this week or what, whatever it might be. Get to know them, get to know them quickly and, you know, relax them and then, you know, share a little bit, like kind of blend into the questions that you're going to be asking. And um, I, I know that's kind of like, it, it's, it's an all, it's a general answer. Like I said, everybody has certain things that might help them relax, but, but that's one. Get before, you know, don't just jump into questions because that puts people a little bit in a weird space anyway. Right. I guess I'm fortunate because I'm so passionate about the Hangout tool itself that I just sort of don't care. You know, I just go for it because I'm so interested in the way the tool works and how it can Which is help, great. You, help you communicate a message and all that. So I yeah. guess I'm okay that way. So Gareth, do you have other um, 
questions that we might use to sum up some of what we're doing because I know that Sandra D has some appointments that she got to do in a little bit. I do, and I'm just looking for a way to plug in my computer because I see that my oh, little red bar. Yeah, okay. it's running out of juice. So um, continue talking. I am yeah. just I may disappear from your view for a second while okay. I go underneath the table. <laughs> I will, I'm going to pin Gareth so he's the primary focus here. You are the man right now, Gareth. What's up? All right. Um, Sandra D talked about um, you know a lot of energy and you know before we went live, she and I had a moment to chat and she talked about um, having a big personality and uh, I'd like to get some tips particularly because there are a lot of people who would like to do hangouts uh, on air but they're afraid to be seen okay. how can we get from afraid to be seen to big personality did, did you you heard that Sandra D while you were busy yeah doing that? okay um. Again, individual approach is always so much stronger, but let's just say, uh, I'll give you a for instance. I had a woman come in um, and kind of like she, she talked about her, her demeanor talking about business was very staid. It was very matter of fact, kind of school, uh, school teacher-ish. You know, she had spent a lot of time in corporate and it was, it was very, you know, kind of serious. And then I found out that she had kids. And, and I would ask her to explain something, and she would explain it in a very corporate fashion, which isn't all that engaging, you know? And so knowing that she had children, I said, do you read to your kids? And, of course, you know, she said yes. And I said, great. Well, when you read to your kids, do you, do you read like you're talking to me? She goes, oh, no, that would bore them terribly. I'm like, okay, that's just it. So, you know, I said, Tell, you know, how do you read to your kids? Let's just pretend I'm a, I'm a three-year-old right now. And for her, it worked because she made the, like, I made her play. And then, you know, she played with me as if she was reading to a three-year-old. And then I played the footage back. And like here you say, you can see on Google Hangouts, you can see it right away. But when I played it back to her, she started to recognize, oh, okay, I got it. And then like viscerally connect her behavior with what looked good. And you know, that's, you, you kind of have to trick yourself sometimes. Like I, you heard me, you might have heard me saying, Gareth, that I tell people to do the, uh, what I call the Jim Carrey exercise, because I couldn't think of anybody with a more rubbery, you know, um, crazy personality than the actor of Jim Carrey. So I would have people tell me their message, or actually I would send them home to do this so that they'd be more free. Close the doors, lock the windows, put themselves in a room by themselves, and act like Jim Carrey and go absolutely wild and crazy and say the stuff that they would say about their business or whatever their message was. And they will feel stupid and ridiculous and over the top and nuts and then watch it back. And you'll be surprised that it's not really that crazy. Wow. That's so, a good one. Yeah. I mean, it's the exact, energy level. Exaggerating. The idea of just exaggerating. Like when I teach people yeah. how to ski, because I've been doing that for years and years, I'm always right. having to tell them they need to exaggerate bending their knees more because they think they're bending them, but they're not. They're not bending them enough. And that's just it. And, and I did the same thing when I was learning to be on camera. They're like, you know, speak louder, um, just be more natural. And like, what in the world does that mean, right? Um, have more fun. So I would smile a little bit more, you know. It wasn't until you burst through, I call those the default settings. So if somebody is a very quiet speaker, that's their default for their vocal tone. If somebody has generally low energy when they're used to presenting in a corporate situation or, you know, at a private, you know, one-on-one -on -one with somebody, then they're going to have that default. I had one gentleman who um, studied to be a guru. He went to India, studied for 10 years to get Zen, right? Zen on camera is boring. Zen on the Ellen show doesn't work. And so his publicist called me up, and this is a guy that, like, you know, Okay, the publicist called him up, called her up. This is a guy that I'm just pausing to try to get it in because it seems like she's stuck with the Wi-Fi connection. I'm going to keep it going, and then she'll come back, hopefully. So there's some other questions that I can address that are talking about what is the best view for looking. In other words, should I be looking down, looking up, looking straight ahead? Um, with Hangouts, it's a little bit tricky at times because of where the camera is. 
And looking straight ahead might not be looking straight ahead. In other words, you might be looking straight ahead at the computer monitor, but your camera's up higher, so it looks like you're actually looking down. So there are some tools, like there's one I use, it's, I'm not using right now, um, but sometimes I use, it's called Poonvus, or Poonvis, and it allows you to put the film strip of the people up above the main window. And when it's up above the main window, you can actually look at the people in the film strip and your eyes will be closer towards the top of the window, and that will be allowing you to be looking more towards the camera, because a lot of times that camera is right at the very top of your monitor. So it looks like Sandra D is just coming back. Um, I'm going to get her visible here. There you are. You're back. Now you're going to have to unmute yourself, that little red, can that little red microphone, so we can hear you again. I think you're back. Okay, you might still be frozen this time. So I'm going to keep going, and if you need to leave and come back again, great. If not, then I'm going to wing it, because this is what happens with live TV. This is what we're doing here. So more questions were saying, as far as the angle of your eyes and where they hit the camera, sometimes you can adjust the camera, and that's sometimes easier than others. If it's built into your computer, it might not be as easy to adjust the computer monitor, but if it is a separate thing, I've heard of some people saying that they've tried putting the camera right in the middle of the screen, and they kind of have to look around it to see what's there, but then it allows them to be looking straight at the camera. So there's things I would experiment with, figure out what's going to give you the best, hey, you're back, except you still need to unmute in the upper right where the microphone is. There. Okay, now we can hear you. Okay, good. Hi. Sorry about well, that. Welcome back. Well, this I is, got lost. Yes. This is part of live TV that doesn't happen on TV, but it happens in Google <laughs> Hangouts more than we'd like to say. So we were talking about eyes and focus and where are you looking, whether you're looking down, because it's a pretty common thing in Hangouts to be looking down just because of the way the setup is. Yeah. And I was suggesting there's certain tools, mm. plugins that you can add that allow the film strip to be up on top, but then you have to train your mind or your eyes to look at the top film strip instead of the big picture. But either right. way, this is this is one of the challenges. Um, do you have a suggestion whether looking down or up, if you had to choose between the two rather than straight ahead, which is better? In general, it's kind of funny. I like if I'm in my my home office or in my studio. I have two shelves, and I put my, I literally put my computer up higher than my eyes. So even if I am looking down, you don't lose my face. You know what I'm saying? Whereas a lot of people will have the computer or their camera on their desk, and so it's more, it becomes more like this. So are you standing when you're doing that? Yeah, a lot of times I am. Okay. In my home, up in my in my studio office, yeah, I'm standing a lot of times. Okay. I, my energy is higher when I'm standing, and I, um, I have a, a, a fellow and associate of mine that I do business with a lot of times, and I've done webinars with her, and, and I didn't even realize that she's standing. But her energy is always really great, and her eye contact is really a little bit more like here. You know, like most of the time when I'm talking, I'm talking to the camera. Right. You know, everybody wants to talk to the pictures that are at the bottom. Right. But I, I'm talking to the camera. And I can see peripherally whoever's, you know, like Ronnie, I'm actually seeing you and seeing your reaction. So I know, I know when you're nodding at me and when you're listening, right. you know. Right. Yeah. So, so, um, so yeah. Uh, another question from out there on the comments. Cassandra is asking, what kind of prep can you do to prepare yourself to do the Hangout? Topics, et cetera. I know you're going to have helpers. This is more of a personal thing, whether you write some notes, et cetera, to yourself. Some notes. Yeah, bullet, if, you're, if you're doing like, um, you're like this, if you're doing an interview or you're doing an in, inform, something that you're giving information, um, bullet point. You know, it's kind of like when I prep people to do their videos for their website or a video for their blog and they want to give really good information, just put bullet points down. Um, I would suggest never ever memorizing anything because that kind of gets you messed up in your head. Mm. So, um, you know, I just put down bullet points and, and if you have a certain time limit, I know I have to do this. I'll put down like at such and such a time, you know, 45 minutes in or 20 minutes in, I want to be at this point in the conversation or I want to make sure I've hit these points and, and that will enable you to finish the conversation 
or finish the hangout and kind of be like, okay, I covered it all. That was that was great. It's just a way of you know keeping you right. aware of what you're doing. But yeah, that, I have bullet points. That ties into practice, I would think, um, because if you've done the same presentation multiple times, it becomes more natural. And so right. I would, assuming, I mean, you could just stay robotic, but I would become more natural with it. And then you feel less stressed that I'm going to forget this thing because right. you want to make sure you cover all these things. So if you just practice it enough times, first two times you might have only done three out of your ten bullets. Well, you know, that's what it is. And you just sort yeah. of grow and start adding more and more, and hopefully you'll get more comfortable bringing it in naturally so that it's part of the conversation. So true. Yeah, that's what that's the way it goes with interviews as well. But if you, uh, you know, it starts with, you know, if you if you've got a business topic that you talk on, there are things that you're an expert in that you can talk off the top of your head forever. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that's really if you're going to be giving informative, you know, webinars or hangouts or something, that's where you start. What are the things that you are the most comfortable talking about? And give yourself three bullet points. You never, even if you're going into an interview, like a media interview, I say you don't want to give more than five bullet points. Because you give more than that, people get overwhelmed, and it becomes overwhelming to you. It doesn't allow for a conversation, you know. Um, so if you have, say, you know, 20 minutes, and you've got 10 bullet points, and you're trying to have an interaction with another human being on a hangout, it's going to be really hard right. to not look like you're pushing through to get all that done, you know. And no, if you do run into conversation, what in that bullet point list can you let go? Which is a priority, and which isn't? You know, or so what much. you might be able to put in a different order because it's just naturally part of the conversation. You can bring it in then instead of waiting different yeah, order. Absolutely. So part, part of the same practicing thing, um, I would suggest, and actually let me ask you, would you agree <laughs> that, yes. that the idea of potentially practicing with a friend doing this interview before you have to get live in case it's not something you do a lot maybe you could practice with your friend just doing a regular hangout and not have it be recorded yeah yeah I think that'd be great um, and give your friends some legitimate um, unless they are your target market or your audience give them some legitimate questions that you think would come at you you know so that you guys don't end up goofing off you know what I mean this is like you really want to make it work. So um, I would do it if you have a coach, like a media coach or something like that. That, of course, is the better thing to do because if I do that with somebody, I'll be taking on that role. And I, I put them through their paces. I, I, you know, I can be the audience member that's supportive. I can be the audience member that's ignorant. I can be the audience member that's angry. And it kind of will – and most of those things won't even pop up when you're doing this kind of thing. But if you're prepared for them, then nothing's going to throw you. So it just – Helps right. you to own that space that much more. Right. Chris Pilgrim's asking, are there any colors of clothing to avoid on camera? And I'm going to just add with it, is there any kind of striped patterns that we might have concerns with? Well, you have mentioned before that some people worry about that extra 10 pounds. And certainly I learned the hard way that I, I, it's kind of a given. You stay away from horizontal stripes if you're concerned about looking big. But I learned the hard way that big prints – will are, are just not a good thing I, I did a video for um, for an event and and I was wearing a large flowered print and it just it just did not it was very distracting and very strange on camera so um, I think solid colors and small prints no do you know what hound's tooth is hound's tooth is bad uh, in general a little vibe Vibrating kind of because like that weird thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. I've but, also seen um, it with, with really tight vertical stripes. Sometimes those also get the camera weird. They kind of gel together and do this weird thing. Yeah. So I always think that um, uh, the color is great. Although today I'm wearing I'm actually wearing a silver jacket. Not the not the not the most colorful, but um, in person it looks okay. But if you're actually going on camera and you want to know what colors to wear, find something. Uh, I mean, I literally I have a personal stylist on my team, and I bring her into my live events, and and I have her actually interact with people because guy girl it doesn't matter. There's a great way to figure out what colors look good on you, and it's to have somebody get super close to your eyeball and look into your eye, and even if you think oh, I've got brown eyes you'll discover that there's other colors in your eyes, like blue or green. And if you wear those colors, it'll just brighten your skin tone and you'll feel better about yourself. Those are usually the colors that people will remark about how good you look. 
So, um, you know, solid colors to be safe and wear, wear the colors that light you up. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to sort of wrap this up because we're close to 45 minutes and I cool. want to try to keep this and your schedule going. So I really appreciate you coming on. Um, would you be available? Sorry, I sh should have asked you offline. But would you be available for a follow-up if we decided we needed another specific oh, yeah. um, to try to cover the same topic? Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot I, more specific things we can cover. That'd be fun. You're, you are currently in a hotel getting ready to do a live show. Can you tell us yeah. everybody about that in case there's other people in the LA area that might want to come and join in with what you're doing? Sure. Yeah, I'd love that. Thanks. Um, yes, I'm in the lovely boardroom of the Marriott Hotel at LAX right now. Um, in a couple of days, uh, Thursday night, we kick off my live event and it's entitled Selling on Camera because as we've been talking about here, if you don't own who you are on camera, you can't get people to move or buy anything. So I talk about what I do at this live event this weekend uh, which is Friday and Saturday but I also bring in my group of experts like I said I mentioned my stylist there's a lot more than just you doing a good video that's going to get your message and your products out to the masses it requires understanding things like Google Plus so that's why we need Ronnie um, but but also understanding how do you you know how do you market your videos when you do them how do you get people to the to the Google Hangout? How do you reach the right audience? How do you package your products? If you have a training, you know, a training package or a DVD or an actual hard product that you're selling, how do you package it? How do you distribute it? How do you make your business run from what you're doing on your videos and in your Google Hangouts? How do you make that visual brand work so that it sells for you? That's what this weekend's all about. So I've got everybody from Roger Love who talks, he's a voice coach to the celebrities. So he's talking, I've got Craig Deswell talking about how to write your book because your book makes you legitimate suddenly and you get in the media, you know? So all of those things are powerful to help you build your brand and we are, we're gonna have a blast here this weekend and the VIP tickets are gone, but um, the, there are still two for one tickets for general admission, so you still get to see everybody, get all the great information and, and meet whoever you need to in the room to help you actually make that happen. So it's at my website, which is uh, charismaoncamera.com. The easiest thing to do is just go on there and you'll see selling on camera is right across the top of the page and click on it and it'll tell you all about it. There's a little video that I put up real quick just recently about talking about why we're coming down to the wire and why you should be there. So you can watch that at charismaoncamera.com. And I'd love to see people there. You know? Yeah, we've actually got a link for charismaoncamera.com slash selling on camera uh, it, in this event right here. So they can just go scroll to the bottom of that information area and just click right to it and get to there. Now, you are good. Thank you. Sandra, <laughs> do, you, do, you do you have, after your event is over, is there going to be any video packages or anything to watch or is this not the way yours is set up? From the video, I mean from the event. From the event, yeah. You, you know, the interesting thing is we're not creating a product from this one. It's a little too big. But um, this event will be happening again, but it's never going to be in this format. It's not going to be at this price point. So it's going to be a smaller, more intimate event at a much higher price point. So I should let people know that too. They, they think they're going to come in six months or come to the next one. Um, it's going to be very different. So I would come and grab what you can. But um, what we are going to do is grab some of the experts that I have on the stage, and I'm going to be doing monthly webinars. So it's a very small fee for the monthly webinar, and you actually get like this. You get the ability to do question and answer and actually chat with them. I do a little teaching. I interview the expert, and it's not a sales webinar. So we don't spend 45 minutes selling you anything. It's really just content, getting to know, like, say, Roger Love, I'm hoping will be my first guest, which would be at the end of March. And, um, and he's going to be, you know, sharing with us the value of like working on your voice and how your voice can actually create a reaction in somebody that is either good or bad. You're either pulling them towards you or you're pushing them away. And it's one of those things that's performance oriented, but if you're nervous, it shows up. So it actually encompasses a lot about, you know, leading people. And, uh, and he's a lot of fun. So he might be our first guest. And then every month we're going to have experts talking about the video marketing and, you know, how do you get yourself in the media without paying a publicist, that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. thanks for, for joining us. Thanks, Gareth, for coming in and, and being part of the show. And thank you to all of you out there in Google Plus and YouTube and wherever you are watching. 
for adding comments and interacting. This is what makes this stuff so magical. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to do another event with Sandra D. And this will be coming up. So hopefully this helped you feel more comfortable on camera. Some of the big takeaways are learn to be yourself and be comfortable with that. And then bring that in such a way that you're excited about what you're talking about on camera. And then the wonderful tool that we've got with Google Plus allows you to basically pin yourself so you can see what you look like right there in the camera. It's a phenomenal tool. In fact, Sandra D, I would encourage you to tell some of your people trying to figure out how to what they look like on camera to get on a Google Plus Hangout and just do that instead of just looking in front of a mirror. Yeah, and you know, this is also a great way that I can work with clients as well. I do Skype sessions, but it, now I'm starting to realize that Google Plus Hangout might be a good way for me to work with people. So. Yeah, because you could do a bigger group, right? I mean, you could have group sessions with people, and everybody can be giving feedback to other people as well. So yeah, cool. yeah, I could. All right, well, thank you all out there. I'm going to end the broadcast. I'll be coming back to the event and answering questions, and m later Sandra D might come back as well. And uh, we'll see you again for the next topic, whatever that might be. Oh, by the way, going to South by Southwest shortly in Austin, and I'm planning on doing a bunch of interviews from there, so that will be some of the big stuff coming up. And then just next week, we've got our review of the Google Plus communities after three months. Where are we at and what's going on with them? That's going to be coming a week from now. So I sound like I got a few things. Yeah, look at you. Okay. Thank you all, and we'll see you again. Bye.